Thank you for coming on WMNF, Stephanie. Let's begin with just telling our listeners, what have you found with the corals that your researchers have transplanted? Yeah, um, it's really exciting time. Our um, outplanted corals that we planted a few years ago um, have basically reached sexual maturity. So we've actually found gametes inside these corals. Uh, so we found evidence of the eggs and sperm, and this is a first for these types of corals, for the massive corals in Florida and the Caribbean. So it's a really exciting time for us because it means that these fragments that we've outplanted have grown very quickly. They've been able to reach maturity um, and are ready to become parents themselves. And, you know, that's our ultimate goal is that one day all the corals we're outplanting can take over um, the duties of repopulating the reef themselves. So it's a really exciting time for us. Where has this been done? Um, this was at Newfound Harbor Reef, um, which is in the um, Lower Keys area. What's, why is it so important that you found gametes? You mentioned this a little bit already, but yeah. um, finding eggs and sperm in these newly mm -hmm. transplanted corals, that could help the, the future population of, of the reef. Yeah, so, you know, the kind of really big picture is that as everything that we do with outplanting corals, we want to ensure genetic diversity. And so we do that in the lab. A lot of the times we're taking gametes from corals and mixing them in the lab to produce new genetic material. But for the corals to be able to sexually produce out on their own in, you know, on the reef on their own is a really, you know, really big step for them to be able to continue to, you know, spawn, produce new genetic material, and, um, you know, repopulate the reef with those new genetic material. Is it just one species that this has happened with, or, or tell us what the species are that you're working with? Yeah, so the species that we're talking about as a first in the, in Florida and the Caribbean is mountainous star coral which is a reef building species. So that's why it's also really important is that it's, this is a species that's really important for building up the backbone of the reef. Um, we also have success with um, sexual reproduction and spawning with um, both elkhorn and staghorn coral. So those are two branching coral species that we work with. Um, but then we also have a variety of other species that we work with that just aren't spawning out in, um, in the water yet. Anytime I have an interview about corals, I have to ask about two of the main coral issues in Florida, mm -hmm. especially during the summertime. We, I want yeah. to ask you about how the bleaching is this summer, but I also mm -hmm. want to find out the progress of stony coral tissue loss disease. Mm -hmm. How far has it been spreading this year? Yeah, so in terms of stony coral tissue loss disease, you know, we're still seeing, you know, mortality from, um, but the disease front luckily has not advanced forward. Um, so when you look at the map of how the disease has advanced, it luckily has not extended past where it was last year, which is really good news for us in terms of, you know, the Florida reef track. So where, is, um, where are you going? Where, where, where is that geographic point? Yep. So it last year it did extend all the way down to the Key West area, so that it you know finally kind of reached way down there. Um, and so luckily we haven't seen it really extend much farther past that. Um, but it's still you know a very very deadly contagious disease for our you know our stony corals. So it's still um, something we're very concerned about. And you know we do research and with our partners and things about um, mapping the disease front and things like that. And then in terms of bleaching, you know, in the summer with warmer temperatures, bleaching is possibility. We have seen evidence of bleaching in some areas. Um, we're not in doing, you know, it's not a mass bleaching event or anything like that at this, at this time, but bleaching is, you know, a possibility for corals during the summertime with warmer temperatures. Well, those were my questions. Is there anything else that people should know about your coral research, especially the, the newly transplanted corals of forming gametes in the field. Sorry, I hope all those background noises aren't, are you picking them up? Okay, okay, great. Um, you know, um, to reiterate, you know, this is a really exciting time for us because we're able to do asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction in the lab, get those out plants out there, and then in the course of about five years, they're able to become sexually mature, which is much quicker than they would on their own. So it's just a really exciting time for us to see how these science-based restoration efforts are really helping the reef um, on the very long, very slow road to recovery, but they are 
um, techniques that are working and that's really exciting for us. Um, and then if Florida residents are interested in supporting coral reef research and restoration, um, a great way is to purchase the Protect Our Reef specialty license plate. Um, so you can help raise awareness for the reef by driving around with a reef plate and then also um, portion of the cost of the reef plate goes to Moat and some of our partners for different uh, reef restoration initiatives. Well, Stephanie Kettle with Moat Marine Laboratory, thank you so much for coming on WMNF. Thank you for having me. Right, take care. Bye-bye.